It's an animal world out there. Watch the World Animal Awareness Society channel and feel right at home. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while. down here and see if I can get this baby. Absolutely will not leave without him. Oh my goodness. It started out that a wonderful Houston rescuer named Araceli actually saw him out in the field and she asked Elena Rosenblatt if she if she could find somewhere to go. She texted me and I said yep we'll take him. She spent seven hours, or maybe even a little bit more, out looking for him. Uh, she was almost ready to leave at the end of the day and found him actually laying in a field. And he didn't run from her, he actually came to her. And uh, she picked him up and called us, and we picked him up from, the ca from her car. And immediately, we knew that this dog was dying. Immediately, we took him to uh, Dr. K at 242 Animal Hospital. Open that day, and when I saw this dog, oh, it was Friday we got him because Glade Valley was closed. They were going to be open. On our way, I called my regular vet, and they said, "Yeah, bring him in in the morning." And when I saw him and smelled him, I didn't want to wait. To I didn't want to wait. He needed to. to who, be is, seen. who is this? What's this vet's name here? Actually, have a card. It's called 242 Animal Clinic, and he is Dr. Cottonsteady. Okay. And he has a guinea pig that runs around his office, uh, which is really cool. Well, if you're going to have something and you don't have, like, a toy train around the top, why not a guinea pig, right? Look at you, buddy. Let's see you. Minnesota people wanted him immediately, and so Arista can talk about the transport that she went on in order to get Teddy and 48 other dogs to our sister rescue in Minnesota, which is Northern Lakes Rescue, and they're awesome. They're 100% foster-based. Um, a lot of the dogs are already fostered to adopt before they even get down there. So we use them after our dogs are vetted. We do all the shots and, and the spays and neuters and um, get them fixed up and then they go on transport. And Arista went on a transport for the first time and she can tell you that, a little bit about that. Yeah, so taking Teddy was a really special journey for me because he, it was so incredible to, just to watch his healing process and like Kelly said the poor guy had to wear a cone for almost two months he went through multiple surgeries and and Kelly and I were both there for the first one but Kelly sat through every surgery with him with our vet and he, he really required you know around the clock special care from us the entire time he was here as soon as he was cleared from the vet and got his last set of stitches out, um, Shannon at Northern Lakes contacted us. She had seen his video and been following his story and just fallen in love with Teddy. And so we, we knew that that was the right place for, for him to go. Actually, Jackie contacted yeah. me from Minnesota, <laughs> like right at the beginning. I have to have this dog. Right. So um, I went on transport, um, took... 48 dogs, rescue dogs, that, that Shannon from Northern Lakes had rescued out of Texas, and Teddy was one of those, and um, drove from, from Texas to Minnesota and delivered Teddy along with the other rescues to Shannon. And um, it, it, when you watch the videos of Teddy's welcome in Minnesota, you can tell that it was just all meant to be. Um, Shannon actually collapsed on the ground and started hugging him and crying and so did his foster 
and he, he's in a wonderful place now and has a chance at a, at a good life. And a lot of people will look at the photos and the videos of Teddy and say, oh, well, that's, that's a, a really special case. But in reality, there are so many dogs like Teddy that are in the Fifth Ward in Houston that need our help that are dying because nobody is saving them and they're not getting the vet care that they need. So, Also, Teddy, I call him my miracle warrior, and he's scarred up. They removed dead tissue from his cheek. They removed almost all the skin from around his neck and were able to close him up. Um, I think that in 20 years of rescuing, that he's the most critical dog that we've gotten that actually survived. Um, the vet gave him 50-50 when he saw him, and I think he was being generous. I really don't think that he thought Teddy was gonna make it, but that dog didn't miss a beat. He marched on just like a warrior. He never complained, he was happy, despite all of that, and it's truly amazing. He was just uh, my warrior dog. Um, he's already been a leader, and he was just fantastic. But if you have any questions about him, you can call me. Can you turn around? Can you turn around? I think it's just kind of a little around in this area where he's tender. He's So this is Teddy. He's been such a good boy. We've been fostering him for a little over a week now. He really likes to spend time outside. He loves going on walks. He walks really nicely on his leash. He likes to cuddle. He likes to sleep in bed at night with you. But if you prefer that he sleep on the floor, he's okay with that too. But he really is a good snuggler in bed. Teddy, Teddy, Teddy. Oh, you're sniffing. He really likes to sniff everything. He's got he's got a pretty powerful sniffer because he puts his nose to the ground and just sniffs everything he can. Dad, I hear you recording for the World Awareness Society. What is that? Yeah, you mean World Animal Awareness Society? Well, I'm a volunteer with the World Animal Awareness Society, Emerson. I volunteer my voice for use in animal rescue videos. And I don't know if you know this, but everyone at the World Animal Awareness Society is a volunteer. But what do they do? They're award-winning volunteer filmmakers who have interacted with 2,200 animal welfare nonprofits, including Maddie's Fund and Austin Pets Alive, providing information-rich content to more than 45 countries in the last 10 years. Dad. What's that mean? Okay, Em, how about this? They make short movies about animals that are in peril, that are hurting, you know, in bad shape or dying or homeless in the streets. They film rescuers doing heroic work so they can focus on saving lives. The World Animal Awareness Society posts the rescue videos on social media, and then they're broadcast on TV, sharing the heroic stories with people all over the world so they can understand what's really going on. Cool. I like animals. How did you start volunteering? Well, I met their director through social media and saw the work that they were doing and knew that I could help their cause. So I asked if I could volunteer. I am very fortunate to have really great jobs providing the voice to so many shows that I believe it's important to give back. Since I've been volunteering with the World Animal Awareness Society, they have created the seventh most influential YouTube channel for dog rescue lovers in the world. WA2S Films. That's so cool. Hey, Dad. Nice job. Do you think I could volunteer too? You already are, Em. You already are. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. Yep. That'll do, Emerson. That'll do. You're watching the World Animal Awareness 
Society. <laughs>